Hi, it's The Wire. <clears throat> Scruffy throat today. Gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. On Roku, we're in the sports section. Look us up, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about a fight that took place this weekend that has a lot of people here buzzing online. It looks like a major arrival in the light heavyweight division. Artur Bituriov beat Tavares Cloud, and he did so in emphatic fashion. Cloud looked like he was the smaller man. Cloud looked like he couldn't take Baturbiyov's punch, right? Cloud at one point gets knocked down and he's belly first on the canvas, right? Now, right now, understand we're in a cycle in boxing where flat-footed slugger types think Joe Lewis, think Gennady Golovkin, think Arthur Bitter be off. Right? These guys have captured the fans' imagination. And people are wondering who could beat them. This seems to be the next step in the evolution of boxing. Heavy handed guys who are able to muscle you into a corner or up on the ropes. And then they're able to just turn on the offense. They're big punchers. People can't fully tie them up, right? The punches land, the opponents get knocked out. There's no reason to ask questions about whether or not the winner could fight into the later rounds or has the stamina to do so because the fight never gets into the later rounds, right? Guys get stopped and they get stopped early under a barrage of power punches. Right doesn't even look like the winner is setting up the onslaught. He's not trying to set up a right hand. It's a two-handed attack. Right? The winner has the ability to knock you out with either hand. Let me just say this. I'm a skeptic. Just like I'm a skeptic of Golovkin, I'm an even bigger skeptic of Beterbiev, because this guy hardly has any pro fights, right? Tavares Cloud was a big step up in class for him. We're seeing a fight style that works against non-elite opposition and against faded opposition. Tavares Cloud's career was in jeopardy before this fight. Tavares Cloud looked bad against Adonis Stevenson and against Bernard Hopkins, right? My point to you is there's a whole range, an entire spectrum of styles that we have not seen Baturbiyev in the ring against, right? Let me also point out, too, that Baturbiyev is huge for a light heavyweight. Now that's a blessing in the early rounds when he's swinging that weight around, when he's able to lean on you and throw punches out of a clinch. But every coin has two sides. That extra weight becomes a burden against an opponent who can move, who can take this fight into the later rounds, right? Then that extra weight becomes a handicap. Now, let me just say this. The Turbioff has big punching power, but what I want people to do is I want people to focus on the big hitters they have seen in boxing history. I'm going to name a few of them, and I just want you to understand that the sport isn't called punching. 
The sport isn't called fighting. The sport is called boxing, and it's called boxing for a reason. Because having a big punch isn't enough. Even the big hitters have parts of their game that are outside the big punch. You have to set up punches. Don't buy into the optical illusion of a guy who's Superman, who's physically stronger than everyone else and can just walk through everyone. That's a myth that keeps resurfacing every few years, <clears throat> right? It's only a myth. Think about it, right? Take a look at Sonny Liston. Destroys Floyd Patterson early twice. Take a look at big George Foreman. Right? I'm telling you, I was alive at the time. People feared for Ali's safety when that fight was announced. Right? Foreman had destroyed Joe Fraser. But understand, as big as those guys hit, an argument can be made that their best punches were their jabs. Both guys had stiff jabs. If you research their past, you would find out that when Foreman was an amateur before the 68 Olympics, he trained with Sonny Liston. And Sonny Liston taught him how to improve his jab. Let's talk about more recent fighters. Lennox Lewis, murderous puncher. Just look at the Razor Ruddick fight. Just look at the Michael Grant fight. Understand, Ruddick and Grant were viewed as bad men before they ran into Lennox Lewis. And what you're going to find out is Lennox Lewis, as heavy a puncher as he was, and understand, when Lewis ruled the rules, he was physically bigger than opponents. Understand that the Lion had a jab. Understand that the lion would bend a little bit, would bend his head. Understand Lennox Lewis, even when he was bigger than everyone else, didn't just come across the ring and attack you. There was a method to Lewis's game. Right? Lewis would come out and you would see a jab. Right? Lewis would set up punches. When Lewis fights Mike Tyson, Right? Understand, Lewis just doesn't run across the ring and meet Tyson in the middle of the ring. He softens up Tyson for several rounds to the point where the ending becomes a foregone conclusion. Right today, let's name some big hitters. David Hay. I keep telling people David Hay is one of the hardest hitters in the sport. But you'll notice David Hay doesn't just run across the ring and empty the gun on you. Nor does David Hay try to walk you down. In fact, for much of Hay fights, even fights where Hay blows out the opponent, Audley Harrison fight, David Hay is far away from an opponent. You'll actually notice the physical distance between the two men. Right? David Hay is looking for openings. He's patient. Then you'll notice, too, David Hay doesn't have to be up close to hurt you. Yes, David Hay can throw hellacious hooks, but you'll notice David Hay can also reach you with long straight punches from way outside. So understand, David Hay is in range even when he's too far away for you to hit him because he knows how to drop step, he knows how to drop that front foot and then deliver power shots from way outside. Another guy, Vladimir Klitschko, he has a great left hook. But you might not see that left hook for several rounds because he has a great jab. And of course he has a great overhand right. So you'll notice, even a big hitter, a great athlete like Vladimir Klitschko doesn't try to impose himself on you. He's not in the pocket out the gate. Now let me say, the trend in boxing, we've had it before. This is what boxing used to be. Flat-footed slugger types coming forward on their front foot. 
When I was a kid, I had a several-year argument going with my dad, who would always try to talk up Joe Lewis. And I thought, come on now. You know, Joe Lewis, slow foot speed. Glacial to me. Right? Big-time puncher. One of the best users of leverage I've ever seen in my life. But at the same time, too flat-footed. How would Lewis even survive in the ring with Ali? Well, that's what we're getting now with Golovkin and Baturbioff. We're getting these guys who look like they've invented boxing because they're flat-footed and they're walking you down. So what I have done in my favorite section here on my YouTube channel page is I have posted the highlights of one of the most important boxing matches in history. Two Hall of Famers going at it. Heavyweight champion at the time, Joe Lewis. It's a 1941 fight. And in my opinion, he's fighting a superior boxer to him. It's the light heavyweight champion, Billy Kahn. Now understand, Lewis wins the fight by KO in the 13th round. But at the time of the stoppage, Lewis is losing the fight on the scorecards. Two of the three judges have Billy Kahn ahead. Now what do you see, and unfortunately it's not a complete tape of the fight. It's not the full fight, it's just the highlights. What you're going to see is this fight has secrets. Right? Joe Lewis does what Arthur Beterbioff does better than Beterbioff. He's a hellacious puncher. Big time puncher. You'll notice that in the second round. He almost ends the fight in the second round. There are times where he hits Billy Kahn and Billy Kahn freezes. That's how heavy a puncher Joe Lewis is. Right? Lewis's uppercut is the punch of this fight. It sets up a lot. That uppercut starts landing and you notice Billy Kahn's unprepared for it. That's one of the first secrets of the fight. But I feel the biggest secrets of the fight can be found in the 11th round and the 12th round. The reason we get the ending we get in the 13th round is because Billy Kahn in the 11th round comes inside on Joe Lewis and outworks Joe Lewis to the body. Right? If you want to see how a smaller man against a big time inside puncher, one of the best short punchers we've had in the sports history, Joe Lewis. If you want to see how a guy could out Joe Lewis, Joe Lewis, take a look at the 11th round of this fight. And understand, Billy Kahn's style is not that style. Billy Kahn's plan A is to move around the ring to hit guys with punches off movement to surprise people. You think Floyd Mayweather's lead left hook is good? Look at Billy Kahn's lead left hook. Kahn can lead with power shots. In the 11th round, he comes inside, he out Joe Lewis's Joe Lewis. Then in the 12th round, Kahn tops himself. Kahn who didn't have a big punch. He's not a big puncher. For his career, he has a less than 20% KO ratio. Using timing and balance, he almost drops Joe Lewis in the 12th round. That's what sets up the 13th round. Right? Billy Kahn foolishly decides he's going to come in and continue more of the same. Had he gotten on his bike, that 1941 fight might have been one of the biggest knockouts in boxing. The point I'm making to you is simply this. Let me point out too. If you look at the 10th round, you're going to see Billy Kahn looking like Andre Ward. Right? The fight's close, then Kahn starts to pull away. My point to you is Billy Kahn would beat Arthur Batoriov. We've already been here and done that. We've seen what happens when flat-footed guys stay in the pocket and are accustomed to just overwhelming you. 
Let's talk about what Cloud should have done to give himself a better chance in this fight. First, you're going to see that Cloud comes out and tries to jab. But Cloud's not a jabber. His jab's not landing. His jab doesn't have any sting on it. Then you're going to see that Cloud, unlike Billy Khan, Cloud is too square in front of Beterbiev. Right? He's not working a side angle. Right? Like Billy Khan does. He doesn't cut the cut the angles in half by having a shoulder between it. Rather, Cloud is too square. So it's a shootout with a guy who wants to shoot that. Let's talk about the clinching. When you're fighting a guy like this, you need to tie him up in the middle of the ring. Now we call it clinching, where you clinch the guy, tie up both of his hands. But you don't even have to do that. If you know a guy is good at throwing punches from certain angles, you can come in and just have your hands up in such a way where the guy can't throw those punches. I want people to look at how Billy Kahn ties up Joe Lewis. Here, Cloud can't tie up the Turby off in the middle of the ring. Then when he tries to tie him up in the side of the ring, Perturbiov has a hand free. That's what leads to the first knockdown. He starts battering Cloud during a clinch. In other words, Cloud didn't tie him up properly. He just didn't. Let me also say this too. Perturbiov is stiff. He doesn't even bend as much as Joe Lewis. He's upright. Right? Boxing's a three-dimensional game. Get low. Let me say, even Billy Kahn doesn't get low enough for my taste. Cloud, the shorter man, should have bent at the waist, should have gotten low. Understand, Baturviov is a mid-range hooker. He's a local puncher. He can't deliver punches from halfway across the ring like David Hay. His power are in hooks. Really, strip away the tape of this fight. He's a mid-range hooker, folks. Right? So what you want to do here is you want to avoid fighting him at mid-range. You also want to block his punches and reduce the space. Force him to get low. You know he's head hunting. Cloud doesn't do that. Now let me say this. I know right now Baturbiov looks unstoppable. If Jean Pascal signs to fight Baturbiov, I'm rolling with Jean Pascal in that fight. Right? Number one, I believe Pascal could take that fight to the later rounds. Then we would find out that Pascal is a light heavyweight. I don't care where Baturbiov fought in the amateurs. I don't care that he fought Kovalev in the amateurs. Baturbiov strikes me as a cruiserweight who has to drain himself to make the light heavy. That might not show itself in the early rounds. That'll show itself in the later rounds. Let me also point out too that as hard as Baturbiov hits, People need to understand that John Pascal, and I keep saying this and everyone says, Dwyer, you're crazy. John Pascal is one of the hardest punchers in the sport. Look at the Blanco fight. Right? Pascal has devastating power. What Pascal needs to do, too, is to just manage distance. Don't be mid-range. Certainly don't stay mid-range on a mid-range hooker. He needs to walk around the ring. He needs to move around the ring, just like Billy Kahn is moving against Joe Lewis. Let me just say, Baturbiov looks dangerous. I would take Andre Ward over him. Even though I'm an Adonis Stevenson skeptic, Adonis Stevenson would have a shot on him because Stevenson moves around the ring. Of course, we found out from the Andres Fanfara fight 
that Stevenson himself might have stamina problems. Right? But please, I know I got a lot of texts and I know a lot of people are saying, look at Baturbioff, he's the future of boxing. I believe Baturbioff stays in the pocket too much, is too stiff, is too much of a mid-range hooker, and is too flat-footed to be the future of boxing. In a clash between styles, where there isn't the kind of weight gap that we saw in the Billy Kahn Joe Lewis fight. I believe Billy Kahn's style beats this style. I believe Ali's style beats this style. I believe a fighter who can maintain distance, who can clinch in the middle of the ring, who has the foot speed advantage, who can stay away from an opponent's mid-range and who can lead with power shots like Khan leads with his left hook with believe it or not power right hands on Joe Lewis right I believe that kind of more fluid fighter can take a Baturbiov out of his comfort zone understand Baturbiyev's not working with the kind of jab that Sonny Liston had against Ali, right? He doesn't have a George Foreman jab. So I believe an Ali type would have even an easier time of it than Ali had against Liston, who had a straight jab. Right here, Baturbiyev, in my opinion, is getting by on size, power and a heavy front foot. This is the sweet science. This is boxing. Right? That puzzle has been and can be solved. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me just say this too. Let's just blow through the weight classes. If Perturbioff were to fight a David Hay, Let's say they were the same size. And understand, the secret to David Hay is don't look at his heavyweight career. He was the undisputed cruiserweight champion. People need to remember that, right? Just understand that there would be times in that fight where David Hay would be the only person within range to throw the kind of punches he can throw. Right, Because a straight overhand right that you can deliver from long range right, is something I haven't seen Baturbiov do. Right, Baturbiov is the guy who has to get up on you to hurt you. Just that fact alone would give him problems against the elites. Let me hear from you. Understand too. Let me give a disclaimer. I thought Daniel Gill would do a lot better against Janady Golovkin. Right? I'm just a skeptic. Also, I do feel Golovkin is a little bit more clever than Baturbioff. Golovkin actually is a little bit more of a cautious stalker than Baturbioff, who strikes me as more straightforward. Right? But just understand I'm a skeptic of Baturbioff's style. Just like I'm a skeptic on whether the great Joe Lewis, and some old-timers here online have roughed me up over this, on whether the great Joe Lewis could hang with a Muhammad Ali. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.